Hello, this is a weekly summary of interesting news in distributed systems and blockchain. My name is Thomas Bocek, so let's get right into it. This is the last in the news segment for this semester. So this channel will resume on the 16th of September. And this is the last new segment and it's all about the challenge task. And in this challenge task, students, they needed to implement a fully working dockerized distributed system, which is a requirement to pass this course. There was a group that implemented, for example, a collaborative editor with CRDTs, which means that even the database there was distributed. And interestingly, I came across braid.org and uh, braid.org, they try to standardize sync methods in HTTP. I'm not sure if this is a too narrow use case to be standardized in HTTP, but I think it's quite interesting. For example, here we see in the HTTP header, uh, the merge type. So quite an interesting project. Another group wrote a system that displayed every minute a Taylor Swift quote in a fault tolerant system. And I just recently saw this site here. It's a teardown of a Taylor Swift wristband. And uh, here we see how it works. So how you can control it. So with the flipper zero, you can control here the LEDs and there's even a linked GitHub repository on how this works. There's also a nice website that sell these wristbands. It's Pixmob. And if every spectator has here a wristband, it can be controlled remotely with infrared and then you can show interesting patterns here. Indeed, a very interesting hack. And another group implemented a redundant mail system with HA proxy for load balancing and our SPAMD postfix and Dovecot. And uh, this group gained a lot of knowledge and I just stumbled upon this kickstart campaign where someone is raising money to write exactly about setting up your own mail server. And this campaign successfully already collected around 30,000 US dollars. Here is the website, the kickstart campaign. And uh, this was quite successful. It's already 35,000 K and I'm sure this group could write also their own book. Another news item that caught my attention that I need to comment on is this one here. It's the following article. Should I use JOT or JWT for authentication tokens? The answer of the author is no. And uh, since we also talked about JOT tokens and authentication in lecture seven, and I implemented my own JOT server, I think I'm qualified to give here a comment. And the author argues you probably don't need it due to complexity reasons. And I argue using JOT tokens makes it much simpler. He argues to use existing session solutions. For example, uh, in Spring Boot, you have these uh, sessions that you can use. But uh, I always, when I use those, needed to look it up, how to configure it properly. And it felt like a lot of magic is happening behind the scenes. And with JOT tokens, I feel it's much simpler, easier to understand, and you can see what's actually happening. And I mean, you can also go complex with JOT tokens. You have the pixie flow, uh, you can have token proxies. And in my projects, I keep it simple. And if it's a small project, I even go with symmetric secrets, which makes it actually super simple. So here, my answer is, of course, should you use it? Hell yes. So enough about ranting. Let's reveal who's the challenge task winner this year. 
the price of 50 Swiss francs in Bitcoins per winning student is sponsored by Accelera, tech venture builder for corporates and startups. I saw many great projects such as complete and redundantly working mail servers. This is the following presentation here. I saw a CRDT based collaboration editor, uh, which is shared docs. And I saw a market sentiment analysis tools here, market minds that runs the machine learning algorithms locally and uh, can even give you a sentiment of those articles and they even have a really nice layout so i also really liked this a lot and one group had a really impressive infrastructure with their own gitlab instance and they deployed their uh, project to their own kubernetes cluster very impressive so I had to choose one and the winner is, I need some drum rolls. And the winner is CoPuzzle Web App. This is a collaborative puzzle using WebSockets deployed internally at OST. Unfortunately, my VPN is currently broken, but if you're at OST, you can check out the link. And uh, for the load balancer, they used traffic. Everything is dockerized, of course. And for the front and back end, they used React with Next. And for the database, they used MongoDB. Congratulations. And you will receive each 50 Swiss francs in Bitcoins. And if you want to know how this works exactly with those Bitcoins in the fall semester, I'll be teaching the blockchain lecture again with a challenge task. So again, congratulations to Misha Winder, Alice Klaus, and Niels Robin Krop. So that's it for the spring semester and see you in the fall semester.